are we creating the karma that is actually going to be the outcome of our own existence? Namaste, Namaskar, Jashi Talet. Hi, I'm Lawrence Sprung, coming to you from Shambhala Studio. And I'm going to give you a little bit more about what we've been doing with this totally crazy film, Lotus Born Master and the Algorithm of Karma. And so we have to ask, what is that algorithm? Are we creating the karma that is actually going to be the outcome? of our own existence. Let's look at what's happening in the world right now, all the crises. And one of the things we never talk about is the potential crisis of AI. You know, we are so confident using our technology. We're sitting back and saying, oh, this is just great. Life is so convenient. I have to ask um, a question. Never before has the world been so connected Never before have we had such advanced communication systems. Never before have we had so much information available to us in a second. But then I have to ask a question. Why are we living in a world today where you've never had such vast breakdowns of communication between nations and people. You have even breakdown of communication with families at the dinner table. You even have breakdown of communication, people going out on a date. And you say we have so much information, but why is there so much fake news? And why are people so deluded? So part of the aspect of this film is we have in another dimension, the two hippie girls are back in almost a futuristic avatar reincarnation and they're going through the jungles after the apocalypse and they see a baby robot is so cute. But then they find out that there's a nefarious drone, the iron scorpion drone is going to get them. And so it's giving you kind of a message that we can use the technology, we can love the technology, but we should not be naive that the technology may one day use us. And so then you have this kind of epic story about how the AI takes control and how people become slaves of the AI. Remember Planet of the Apes? I remember that when I was young. Yeah, and uh, people thought monkeys were cute in the zoo and one day they took control and people are then the slaves of the monkeys. It's a similar idea. So now we're back at the idea of the future apocalypse that could happen when the computers take over, when the AI takes over. And then we have a moment, which is very startling in the film, when we had a glimpse of the future and people are coming back and rebuilding the planet after the apocalypse in a scene which seems to be right out of the Middle Ages, the 1200s, and people are back in a way that they had forgotten growing plants and basic food commodities and living in stone huts. Is that the future? Remember, the future depends on us and us using the technology, not being used by the technology, because we have the power to control our destiny with our own minds, at least for the moment. So then we have this scene that takes place where you're in the subway of New York at 42nd Street Station, and we have a tour group coming into the subway of kids from all across the world who've been part of the diaspora after the explosion, the explosion that wiped out all the digital technology. And the tour guide is bringing them through the catacombs of the subway system. And there, they're looking at the graffiti. And it's really one of the most important parts of the tour because Archaeologists are trying to decode from the graffiti the language 
of ancient civilization to try to understand why ancient civilization suddenly, just like the Mayans and the other civilizations, why ancient civilization suddenly disappeared. Why graffiti? Well, of course, there was a case in the story where they burned books. Why did they burn books? Because so much digital information was being put into the computers, they could rewrite through different platforms that are controlling the information. They're able to rewrite history, rewrite information, and suddenly there's a need to burn the books so that people can't go back and find all that history and all that information which is not online. Go try and look up Aladdin or go look up some kind of great literature. I'm sure what you're going to find is some new cartoon or some new production by some big kind of media group. You won't find the old literature there. You're going to have to dig for it. If you really want to see that old literature and some of the deep, deep writings about it, you're going to have to go to a library while those libraries still exist. And so we're looking at what happens when all digital information takes over, when the AI can communicate with itself, when the AI decides that it doesn't need to have books anymore. And of course, we are atrophying. People are reading less and less, using emojis to communicate. And maybe in the end of the day, we won't have our own minds. Because what this movie is about, is about in the end of the day, people standing up, turning around to the powerful institutions that are controlling the AI and saying one thing, we want to take back the power of our own minds. That's why you practice meditation, to be in the present and to be able to have the power of your own mind. If this is the trajectory we're on now, can we change? Can we reset the algorithm of karma? And the whole point of the movie is that everything ultimately depends upon our own thoughts, our own mind. And if we're dependent on the AI, we will have outsourced our mind to an electrical appliance that then will be able to use our mind, maybe take over our mind. That's already happening. People being controlled by the AI. And so what did the Lotus Board Master teach us? Why did he put so many termas into the cloud to be revealed at this time? When we look at our previous documentaries, we find that some of these termas are very straightforward practices, can be done every day without spending a lot of time, can every day, if you do the practice consistently, change the nature of your perspectives, open up your own realization to the nature of your mind, allow you to change the algorithm of your own life. In this movie, Lotus Born Master and the Algorithm of Karma, the message we're delivering is it's now time for us to take back the power of our own mind. It belongs to us. It doesn't belong to the AI, but that depends on each and every one of us not allowing ourselves to atrophy our mind by outsourcing it to the computer. Bring back the power of your own mind through meditation, through practice, through reading, through your own self-education and be who you are, be the potentiality of everything that you can be. But remember, you're not a computer. We will displace you. Humans will become extinct. <laughs> Lotus Born Master, The Algorithm of Karma. Coming to theaters near you soon.